nosocomial infection is one of the most important issues in contemporary intensive care practice. It results in increased health costs, morbidity and potentially mortality, and most importantly, is potentially preventable. This podcast is designed to demonstrate the principles of hand washing, gowning and gloving for a sterile procedure. Infection rates in hospitalised patients range from 6 to 9% of hospital admissions in available studies. It is likely, given the greater number of invasive procedures and the relative immunosuppression of ICU patients, that this figure is much higher in intensive care units. Urinary tract infections, surgical wound infections, lower respiratory tract infections and catheter-related bloodstream infections are all heavily represented. Proper sterile technique requires the appropriate equipment. For an invasive ICU procedure, current recommendations include a hat, eye protection, a mask, sterile gown and gloves, along with a clean trolley and the sterile procedure tray. It is important to prepare as best you can before going ahead with the procedure. This may include taking time to position the patient in the best possible position, clearing the bed space of unnecessary equipment, wiring, tubing, etc., and ensuring appropriate monitoring is available. Invasive procedures require respect. Hand washing technique is an important part and an underutilised strategy for reducing healthcare associated infections. Current recommendations include applying a hat, mask, glasses, etc. prior to hand washing. All jewellery should be removed. Any cuts on the hands should be covered with a clear sterile plastic dressing. Turn on the tap, wet hands thoroughly with water. Using the no-touch handle, dispense sufficient quantities of detergent onto your hands. 2% chlorhexidine wash is the most appropriate. Wash your hands palm to palm, scrubbing vigorously. Interlock fingers palm to dorsum and wash the webs of your fingers thoroughly. Repeat this palm to palm. Using a monkey grip, wash fingers thoroughly. Encircle your thumb with the fingers and palm of the other hand and wash in a rotatory manner. Scrub the nail bed in the palm. And finally, rinse hands thoroughly, ensuring that water runs downwards from sterile to non-sterile areas. Ensure that you have turned the taps off in a sterile fashion. The entire procedure should last no less than one minute for sterile procedures. Using a clean towel, dry your hands thoroughly. Use a separate end of the towel for each hand. It is important that you develop a method that allows you to protect the sterility of your gown and gloves. The no hands or clothes technique is recommended for this. Firstly, take hold of the non-sterile surface of the gown. In an area large enough to ensure that it does not come in contact with non-sterile elements, allow the gown to unfold towards the floor. Insert your arms into the gown ensuring that your hands do not project from the ends of the gown. This protects objects from contamination by your hands. Despite appropriate hand washing, there may still be some contamination of your hands. With your hand inside your sleeve, pick up a glove and lay it thumb to thumb on your right hand as shown. Through the sleeve, grasp the glove edge with your right thumb. Using your left hand through the sleeve, 
flip the rest of your glove over your right hand and pull it on. Your right hand is now fully protected. Ensure the cuff of the glove is over the end of the gown. Taking the left glove, put your fingers of your right hand under the inverted glove edge. This can then be used to place the glove over your left hand without it leaving the sleeve. Pull it on. Your hands should now remain within a box between your shoulders and navel and between the anterior axillary lines laterally. Clasp them together if necessary. You are now ready to perform a sterile procedure in the intensive care unit as safely as possible for our patients. If you enjoyed this presentation, why not visit our websites at www.crit-iq.com and www.crit-nurse.com. Critique is a leading provider of online educational resources for critical care clinicians. No matter what your level of experience or training, Critique has something for you. Our regularly updated journal club and podcast interviews will help to keep you up to date with the latest news, while our echo database and modules teach you new skills. We even have a series of new apps to help you on the go. You can even join our open access blog and have your say on current topics. Critique, critical for life.